Hello YouTube, Goddard Radio Moscow here again with another beer review for you, as is usual. For this one, we are going to stick to the state of Victoria, to the city of Melbourne, where I'm staying at the moment, and uh, we're going to go to the Beechworth suburb, which is one of the north, uh, one of the northern suburbs of Melbourne. I'm not sure if this is a separate town or if it's a suburb, so I apologise if I'm using the the incorrect terminology or whatever. But this is a brewery who are very highly rated, but amongst the uh, Australian craft beer circles apparently so I'm quite interested to try their stuff here I've heard that the cask version of this beer is very very good so this is their Celtic Red Ale and I'm hoping that the bottled version lives up to this as well I do love a good Red Ale so hopefully this is a very good beer so as is usual with my beer reviews then I'll take you through a very brief history of the brewery very short for this one because it's quite new compared to some of the other Australian beers that I've reviewed for you in the last little while but um, if you don't want to stick with me for that just fast forward a few minutes and you will get right to the tasting section the brewery website's in the video description for you below along with a link to my other reviews that I'll hopefully do from these guys in the quite near future so anyway as I mentioned to you, this brewery is located in the Beechworth suburb in northern Melbourne and it was founded in 2004 by Ben Kraus and his dad Shed. He was quite an avid home brewer apparently, but since then it's grown to become one of the most recognised craft breweries in Victoria and it's also very well known for its pizzeria restaurant these days. But the brewery is located in a 150 year old coach house which also serves, as I said, as a pizzeria and as a 10 tap beer bar and also a beer garden as well. But the pizzeria part of the business is quite interesting and it's there due to the fact that the brewery is co-owned by Maria Frischmann who hails, fr hails from Tyrol in southern Austria which is obviously very close to the Italian border so she's apparently a bit of a master in the kitchen. But their brewing kit at this, in this small brewery is a, has a 25 hectolitre brew capacity, that's 2,500 litres and it's apparently double vessel as well, one vessel houses the mash and the louter while the other contains the kettle and the whirlpool but both vessels are steam heated and they have various tanks for fermentation and bottling and kegging and stuff so those of you who are into your kind of sexy steel work and stuff like that go and have a look at the brewery website and you will get a, a kind of a glimpse at what their kind of equipment is there it's, it's quite interesting to go and read about so as I say check out the brewery website but just to list the other beers you can get from these guys they've got two main ranges in the core range you get the scrumpy cider the golden ale Beechworth Pale Ale, Bling IPA, this guy the Celtic Red Ale, Chestnut Pilsner, Hefeweizen, Robust Porter, Australian Ale and then you've got the Galaxy Ella and Summer IPAs there as well. You also have the Chevalier range which are in kind of nice bottles, I think this is their kind of uh, upmarket beer range should we say, but there you get a Saison, a Hefeweizen and a Beer de Gar as well. So they're quite a prolific craft brewery, as I say check out the website and you'll get an idea of the different beers that these guys do. But let's get on to the tasting of this beer itself. This guy is a 5.3% Irish Red Ale and most of you, I think it's Murphy's, is the very popular beer, the kind of very well known beer that is this style here. But this one was brewed originally for the for as a one-off for the annual Celtic Festival that they have in Beechworth. I think there's a lot of Scottish and Irish population up there. But um, from what I was reading on this beer, it uses canna malt and roast barley in the malt base, but it doesn't say what hops, and as I say, it was brewed originally for the festival. So let me just bring up the camera, and you can have a little quick look at the artwork of this one. You can see there, it's got the kind of uh, the leaf, the three leaf clovers and stuff like that. It has, what's interesting about these beers from the Bridge Road Brewery is they have a hop rating and a malt profile rating as well. So this one isn't supposed to be that malty, but it's got a fairly good, uh, sorry, it's not very hoppy, but it's got a fairly big kind of malt profile on this one, and that's what you would expect from a red ale, but it's quite nicely presented there, and it's got the green for the kind of Irish Celtic thing there too, and you can see this is the symbol here. I'm not sure exactly what the that is actually meant to be, if it's like a tree stump or, or what it is, I'm not really sure. It looks a bit like a tree stump actually, but... I, I'm not sure. It's, it's quite a cool little bit of artwork, but that's the, this thing that's on the bottle cap here is the symbol of the Bridge Road Brewery. Hopefully, if when they see my review, they can tell me exactly what it is, and I'll know that in my future ones. But let's get this guy open, and we'll get on with the tasting. Then I really love a red ale, so my first Australian red ale. So as you can see, a nice smoky opening there, and we'll get it out and into the glass. Now, this is quite a dark red ale, actually, quite a nice coppery colour. Yeah, so that's it all poured out there. So as you can see, as I was saying, it's poured a really nice 
kind of dark coppery colour this one if I put my fingers behind it you can't really see through the uh, the glass at all there but there's a nice finger of quite a bumpy kind of beige frothy head on this one actually more of a bumpy head rather than a frothy head I should say but there's some carbonation just sticking to the glass if I hold it up to the light it's definitely a kind of rosewoody chestnutty red colour actually I need to change position because my legs are getting a bit dead but you can see it's a nice definitely a kind of nice mahogany ready tinged colour on this one a nice chestnut mahogany colour but it's a very attractive looking beer actually there's a lot of little bubbles of carbonation coming up towards the top on this side here it's a really attractive looking beer so let's give it a smell and see how we get on here it's quite a mild aroma on this one I would say that it's got all the it has the kind of typical malt base that you would expect you're getting a lot of nice <laughs> that's typical you're getting a lot of nice kind of um, sort of caramel malts on there that's typical when you go to do that without looking <laughs> but you get a lot of nice kind of caramel malts which is what you would expect from the style there's a good bit of nutty element coming out of this one as well actually you've got a nice really a good mix of kind of bready aromas in there too but the nut flavour or the nut aroma rather mixes with that really well it, as you would expect from what it tells you on the side of the bottle there's not a lot of hop profile to this one but you're getting a little bit of a kind of resinous note a kind of grassy character coming out but it's really not very strong maybe a, a teeny hint of earthy character too but it's a big malty aroma that you're getting on this guy as you would expect the nice caramel malts a good bit of kind of bready flavour yeasty sweetness too some nice underlying kind of toasted brown sugar it does have a little bit of a toasted aroma to it but it's a big malty aroma on this one just take a little bit of time if you try this guy and have a, a smell of the aromas it's quite a kind of complex one and I've heard that that it's quite a nice mix of flavours this beer especially on cask so let's give it a taste and see how we get on here so this is the Celtic Red Ale from the Bridge Road Brewery up in Beechwood, Beechworth sorry It's quite, the f when you first drink it, the flavour comes and then it goes quite quickly, but there's, there's, there's a lot of stuff to this, actually. Yeah, the caramel in this one is actually quite dark and fairly roasted. I'm picking that up just in the middle of the mouth there, but the, the bready character in this one, it's almost a little bit... Um, more of a brown bread it's maybe got just a teeny little bit of cereal character to it but it does at the same time there is just a little bit I think of a kind of almost yeasty sweetness to it it's got quite a bit of complex character even just within this kind of little bready part of the malt base it's an interesting one yeah the caramel in it isn't all that sweet compared to some of the other red ales I've tried. I mean, 5am Saint from Brewdog at home is a very kind of sweet, kind of caramel malt base that's in that. But this is a bit more of a roasted, kind of toasted caramel malt base that's in here. Yeah. There's almost, there is a kind of little bit of a kind of cereal element to it at the same time. Like I say, it, the bread base do, definitely does have that kind of brown bready character so it's quite an interesting one in that regard but it's got there's quite a lot of kind of subtle flavours to this one you need to just concentrate on it a little bit and try and get all the flavour profile out of it but yeah the caramel does become a little bit sweeter as you kind of gradually go through it you get a little bit of the sweeter caramel just kind of before you get right to the edge of the tongue it just sits there but it's more of a darker kind of toasted caramel I think overall but it's a nice kind of toasted slightly brownish bread flavour you're getting in the malt base here and there is a little bit of that yeasty the kind of yeasty sweetness that's in there too but there is a bit of hop profile here too some kind of uh, grassy and maybe a slightly reddish fruit flavour coming out of it actually you know like strawberries not quite sharp enough to be like raspberries or anything it's almost a very slight strawberry flavour if that makes sense it's just a little bit of juiciness but not too sharp if I'm sure if you've tried some of these beers you'll get what I'm talking about
Yeah, you'll notice on the front of the tongue, in terms with the mouth feel, you do get this kind of little juicy character that just kind of, it's almost like an oil that rolls towards the front of the tongue. And that's where you're getting this kind of red, fruity, uh, almost strawberry-like flavour. Now, there is a little bit of fruity element coming from the hops in this one, but it's a big... It's a big malty beer, this one. It's it's quite a subtle flavour, as the aroma suggested. It's quite a nice kind of subtle flavour, but it's a good blend. This one isn't too prominent in any in any sense, if you like. It's a good blend of flavours. So you've got that nice kind of brown bread malt base, some toasted caramel, a little bit of a kind of cereal element in there too. Maybe even a, a teeny hint of kind of earthy character from the hops and some grassiness and just that little bit of fruit character coming out, I think. There's actually a good little bit of nut flavour kind of sitting particularly in the aftertaste, mainly in the middle of the uh, of the of the, the tongue there. So it's really, really nice. I just need to watch my computer doesn't go on, uh, on to sleep mode sometimes when I do these videos. But yeah, overall what I would say about this one, in terms of the flavour, it's a very interesting blend. It's, it's more of a, a blend beer rather than being very punchy in one certain area, as I said. In terms of the mouthfeel, it's definitely mid-bodied. It's very, very smooth. The carbonation is, is moderate, but it smooths it out and gives the beer the kind of ideal mouthfeel that you would like. And it's, it's slightly dry in the finish as well, and that's when you're getting a bit more of a kind of earthy flavour, and that's when the, the sort of grassy flavour of the hops comes out. But the malt base is quite moist and it's 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 really nice. I think that they've got the, the parts of the flavour that you would want. They've, they've, they've done it very well. The malt base comes out when the beer's wetter and the hops are coming out when the beer's a bit drier and that's when you really get the, the beer kind of diversifying a bit. But overall, it's a nice, fairly sessionable beer, I would say. You could drink probably quite a few of these if you're into the red ale style. I'm sure you would enjoy it. But, um, I would say, uh, I think I can see why the cask one would be um, very popular because I think you'd get a nice little bit of sweeter caramel coming out from it. As I said, it's quite a, a toasted caramel rather than anything that you get out of this one. So if you if you could get a little bit more sweet caramel into it, it would be brilliant. Um, but overall, it's a very very nice beer. And if you do like your sort of Irish style red ales, I would I really would recommend you try it out. I've heard that the IPAs that these guy do that these guys do are absolutely beautiful. So hopefully, I can revisit this brewery in the future and review more of their beers. But anyway, um, go and check out the Bridge Road Brewers and have a taste of some of their beer. Go and check out their pizza. It's apparently one of the best pizzas you'll have in Melbourne, so go and check them out. I'll need to do that before I leave the city, but I hope you've enjoyed this beer review. Let me know in the comments section, as always, if you've tried this beer yourself. And please, like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. I hope you're enjoying my series of Australian beer reviews that I'm doing for you just now, and I will catch you soon with the next one in the series. Cheers.